Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Wednesday the 29th of July 2020 and we're going to talk about the Federal Reserve's announcement today to leave interest rates unchanged and what this could mean for gold and silver prices. First of all, just a reminder that on Monday we published a video entitled Gold Reaches All-Time High, Silver Tops $24 where at the time both gold and silver had fallen back from their highs, then of 1946 for gold and $24.61 for silver. Now, as we produce this video, gold has spiked further since the Fed's announcement, from 1953, a little earlier, to the current $1,968, and silver from $24.09 to the current $24.39. No doubt this will have changed once the video is published. So what exactly did the Fed say today? Well, let's take a look at what Bloomberg and Reuters has literally just reported. Bloomberg article dated July 29th, 2020, 7.23 p.m. GMT plus one. Stocks rise, dollar falls after dovish Fed remarks. U.S. stocks rose after the Federal Reserve signaled continuing economic stimulus and as traders sifted through a batch of corporate earnings. The dollar fell. The S&P 500 extended its July rally as the Fed left rates unchanged near zero and again vowed to use all its tools to support the U.S. economy amid a shaky recovery from the coronavirus pandemic. In a widely anticipated statement, the Fed repeated prior language that the pandemic poses considerable risks to the economic outlook over the medium term. The central bank has kept rates near zero since the outbreak's onset in March and rolled out several emergency lending programs. Jerome Powell, chairman, holds a virtual press conference at 2.30 p.m. Washington time. The Fed's large looming presence and ability to act more if needed has provided a backstop for risk assets over the near term, said Jason Pride, Chief Investment Officer of Private Wealth at Glenmead. The focus now shifts to the FOMC's September meeting, when investors might expect more action. Some 19% of S&P 500 companies that have posted results so far have reported per share profits that beat or missed estimates by 50% or more. That's the highest proportion of companies with surprises of this magnitude since at least 2010. Data compiled by Bloomberg's intelligence Gina Martin Adams and Wendy Soong shows. Yet earnings may fail to deliver the kind of support needed to sustain the four-month rally in American stocks anytime soon, according to Liz Ann Saunders, Charles Schwab's Corp's chief investment strategist. She compared the S&P 500 with its forward earnings, based on projected profits during the next 12 months in a report Monday. While the S&P 500 made up 85% of the gap between this year's high and low through Tuesday, the profit gauge only rebounded 20%, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Earnings will eventually need to do more than just beat an extremely low bar to justify the surge in share prices, she wrote. Reuters article, dated July 29th, 7.06pm. Headline. Fed repeats pledge to keep U.S. interest rates low. The Federal Reserve on Wednesday repeated a pledge to use its full range of tools to support the U.S. economy and keep interest rates near zero for as long as it takes to recover from the fallout from the coronavirus outbreak, saying the economic path will depend significantly on the course of the virus. Following sharp declines, economic activity and employment have picked up somewhat in recent months, but remain well below their levels at the beginning of the year. U.S. central bank policymakers said in a statement issued at the end of their latest two-day meeting, which was held by video conference. 
all members of the Fed's policy setting committee voted to leave the target range for short term interest rates at between 0% and 0.25%, where it has been since March 15th, when the novel coronavirus was beginning to hit the nation. The committee expects to maintain this target range until it is confident that the economy has weathered recent events and is on track to achieve its maximum employment and price stability goals, the statement said. The path of the economy will depend significantly on the course of the virus. US stocks held on to the day's gains following the Fed statement, while yields on US Treasury debt edged lower. The dollar, weaker on the day before the Fed statement, fell to its lowest level since September 2018 against the euro. They are basically saying no change to the current approach. The important thing is they're maintaining the recent message that they have an ongoing commitment to keeping rates at their current levels and to maintain their current pace of bond buying, said Jason Pride, Glenn Mead's Chief Investment Officer for Private Wealth in Philadelphia. Fed officials had been expected to spend some of their meeting debating whether and how to strengthen their so-called forward guidance, perhaps by promising there would be no changes to interest rates until the unemployment and inflation rates meet explicit benchmarks. The statement gave no hint of such a change, which many Fed analysts expect won't come until the September policy meeting. The Fed also said it will continue to buy at least $120 billion in U.S. Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities each month to steady financial markets. The Fed renewed its low-rate vow a day ahead of a government report expected to show a record 34% drop in annualized economic output last quarter when authorities imposed lockdowns that closed businesses and kept people home in a bid to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Fed policymakers had hoped those measures would help contain the virus, allowing the economy to bounce back quickly, even as they fretted over the possibility that infections could resurge and blunt the economic recovery. The US Central Bank has rolled out nearly a dozen new lending and credit programmes to fight the economic fallout from the epidemic. But the immediate outlook hinges largely on where infections go from here and how much more fiscal support lawmakers deliver in the meantime. Since their last policy meeting in June, the epidemic has intensified, with an average of around 65,000 new cases detected each day, about three times the pace of new infections in mid-June. Deaths from COVID-19, the respiratory illness caused by the virus, are also on the rise. That prompted governors from California to Florida to impose new economic restrictions. Job growth, which had been unexpectedly strong in May and June, now appears to be slowing. Consumer confidence has taken a hit. Meanwhile, government aid that kept millions of unemployed Americans spending will drop sharply at the end of this week unless Congress agrees on a new relief package. Republicans are split over whether to support a trillion dollars in new spending and Democrats want a figure closer to three trillion dollars, which Congress has already committed to fight the crisis. Small businesses, a mainstay of the world's largest economy, are also increasingly facing a breaking point as government grants run dry and payments come due. So, from these two articles, we can see that the Fed will continue to do what it has already done over the past few months. However, the Bloomberg article suggests that corporate earnings may find it difficult to justify current equity price levels. And the Reuters article suggests that unless new stimulus is introduced, then unemployment and business failures will increase even further. It's not a pretty sight. At the start of this podcast, we stated that gold was $1,968, and it's already jumped even further now to 1979 Silver, when we began this, was $24.39, and it's now $24.89. That said... With $2,000 for gold and $25 for silver within its sights, we shall see quite a large amount of vacillation 
until the market decides whether it's going to breach these figures or not. Now, as we reported on Monday, take advantage of any dips, as precious metals have not fully run their course, and the Fed has left the door wide open for even more US dollar weakness. The index, the dollar index, that is, is down almost 0.5, at 93.2. Equity markets are up between 1 and 1.5%, but the interest is in precious metals. And this, we are certain most of you listening, are most interested in. Now, we're not going to attempt to predict prices over the next day or so, as we have the jobless claims figures out tomorrow, quarter two GDP, and on Friday a raft of economic data, which will undoubtedly affect both dollar prices and gold and silver prices. Jerome Powell has already indicated, though, not to expect good growth figures tomorrow or good GDP figures for quarter two, and this is all acting as a tailwind for precious metals. We shall say more tomorrow and again on Friday, and by the weekend should have a far better gauge of where we actually are and what the markets are currently thinking. Meanwhile, it's going to be a fascinating two or three days. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.